Hey everybody, Mr. McIntosh here. This is part five of my virtualization of ARM-based operating systems on Apple Silicon. Part one through four talked about using QEMU, ACVM, and UTM to be able to virtualize Windows 10. Now I'm gonna show you how to use the technical preview of Parallels that was just announced today to be able to do the same thing. I'm gonna walk you through how to set up the preview account, download, install, configure, and get your Windows 10 ARM-based edition running. We've got a lot to go over, so let's jump in and get started. Okay, the first thing to understand is Parallels is a purchased app. It's not an open source piece of software like UTM, ACVM, and QEMU was. So if this does work for you, you will have to purchase the product, but Parallels is allowing us to test the technical preview with a key as long as you sign up for their beta program. So all you need to do is go to the site and I'll include a link in the description on how to get signed up. So we'll click try technical preview and we'll sign in. Once we're in, this gives us all the instructions that we will need to be able to set up and also some of the limitations. We'll go over that later, but we want to get started getting this set up. So let's scroll down here and you can see that we have a download button here. Let's click on this and it'll start to download the new version of the technical preview of Parallels to your downloads folder. But I've already done that and let's run the installer. So we'll unpack the DMG. We'll install the application. Open. Now, while we're waiting for this, there's going to be a lot of TCC-based application prompts for having Parallels access files on your Mac, and also it's gonna need accessibility options in the, in the privacy settings, and we'll go over that in a second here. Okay, so here's our software license agreement. I'm gonna uncheck on this, but you can, and this will actually help Parallels with some of the information that you're working on, like if it's crashing or there's something with a problem with the VM. So we'll click Accept. We'll type in our administrative password to run the installation. Okay, the VM is starting up. Now here was the permissions that I was talking about. So when we step through this process, Parallels made it really nice for us to do this because it gives you a prompt for each one that you'll have to set up. So we'll click on next. First it's gonna ask us for access for Parallels to access your folders on your desktop. Now your documents and your downloads. Now all those are selected, we'll click finish. Now if you wanna take a look at those settings, all we need to do is go into the system preferences, click on security and privacy, and then click on privacy, and we'll scroll down here, and there's our files and folders. Parallels Desktop has access to all these, and this is previous, when I was running the UTM video, the UTM needed access to the documents folder. So if you ever wanted to turn that off, you could just unclick these and then Parallels would not have access to those folders locations again. Okay, here we go. About Mac with an M1 chip. Your Mac is powered by an Apple M1 chip that is built on ARM architecture. This platform has the following limitations. Existing virtual machines created on Intel-based Mac computers cannot work on Macs with an Intel chip. So if you bring in your VM that you created in Parallels from an Intel machine, it's not gonna work right now. It is not possible to create a new virtual machine using an Intel x86 based operating system installer either. So if you had an x86 version of Windows, that's not gonna work. You need the ARM version. Or if you're going to install Linux, you're gonna need the ARM version of Linux to do that. On such computers, Parallel Desktop uses a new virtualization engine. To create a new virtual machine, you will need a VHDX or an ISO image with an ARM based operating system. So that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use the VHDX image from the technical preview of Windows ARM edition to be able to start our VM. We'll click continue. What's nice is it searches those folder locations that we just gave it access to for a, a valid VHDX file to be able to do. So I've got multiples, right? I've already had, and I'm gonna click select manual because I know where that is. We're gonna select a file. Now I've got two different ones here. I've got a VM that's already set up here, a VHDX, and I've got a brand new one. So we're gonna do this for a brand new. We're gonna set it up as brand new. So I'm gonna use this one that's never been used before. We'll click open and it's gonna start the installation process and click continue here. Here we go. And again, if you have a ARM-based ISO full installer, that should work too. Um, again, it's easy just to download that file. Now, while this is creating, you're gonna, you might be wondering, well, where do I get that file? I've got that link here and I'll put that in the description. You have to join the Windows Insider program for the ARM-based download. So all you need to do is use, you have, if you don't have a Microsoft account, you'll have to create one and all you do is sign in and join the Windows Insider preview program. Once you do, you will have access to the ARM-based version to test out for this installation. And that download is about, and we can actually check that here 8.56 gigabytes just so you have an idea of how large the uh, VHDX file is okay so now we're here it's saying sign into our parallels account 
uh, you can you can if you, again if you already you had to sign up for the preview program so this is where you're gonna sign in or have your password for your account here okay now that we're signed in they're saying you have to activate the parallels desktop technical preview and you can get your activation key when we go window here we'll go back to our initial set, setup here and right below the MD5 checksum is your activation key so all you need to do is cut and paste that and paste it into the next window and you can continue Okay, right after you enter the key, it immediately starts to configure and it says already it needs access to your microphone and your camera if you want to be able to use that inside the VM. I don't need that right now, so I'm gonna click don't allow and also don't allow on the microphone. Now it's configuring Windows 10. Virtual machine right now. This does not take very long and before you know it, Windows 10 will be booting up. Okay, I wanted to call out this part. This is a very important part that you may make sure that you see happening. It's installing the latest version of Parallels Tools. And what this will do is as soon as it starts the VM, it will you'll have network, shared disk, and all the tools that you need to be able to use your VM. And this is helpful because you guys have probably seen my previous videos where I walk over all the other virtualization apps that we've used already to run Windows 10 on ARM. We had to do so many custom things to get you know, networking, working, uh, file sharing, and all these other things. The beauty of Parallels is that all that stuff is set up. So when you get to the desktop, everything is working. You can share your files from your desktop. Your net, you don't even have to install network drivers. You don't have to configure the resolution. You can go full screen immediately. You can resize the window. It's really great. But while we're waiting for this, I also have to talk about some problems. I thought I was going to be able to get this video out early this afternoon when the news first hit. Nope, no, I had nothing but problems. When I first got the VM built, the, the keyboard wasn't working. I had to like resize the window and then I got a password prompt to be able to type in my password. And then once I typed my password, it was super slow and then it got to the desktop. So there were so many problems. And what the root of it was, is the parallel tools was the problem. And what you have to do right now, the workaround for this, and again, this is the first version. We're gonna have some of these problems, right? And it's amazing that we already have a functioning parallels here. But again, there's gonna be some bumps in the road and that's why we're talking about workarounds, right? So we can get a working system. So again, the workaround is that as soon as you get to the desktop here, and I'll walk all through this with you, is that we will have to reinstall Parallels tools every time that we boot the VM until this is fixed. Now there is a workaround that someone posted on the Mac Rumors forum that I picked up on, which is a great workaround, is that what we can do is we go into the drivers section and we can uninstall one of the, the parallel tools and you lose some functionality like automatic resolution refresh and stuff like that when you resize the window but at least you don't have to install the parallel tools every time now if you do those things it's no big deal if you leave that vm running you can just reinstall the parallel tools until this gets fixed and you can use the vm now this is the part where we got to wait on so when, when this part happened, I think we can go full screen. Let me see if we can get it out of full screen here. So this is what the window looks like when we first get right into the setup assistant here. So what's nice is Parallels lets us go full screen, which is really nice. We can also adjust the window too. So if we want to go off, we want to just make it a, a little bit bigger. We could do that too. So it's really nice that it allows you to move around the window sizes here. So we'll walk up, we'll walk through this setup here and I'll see you in a second when we're on the desktop. While we're waiting on this, let's talk about compatibility. The good news is, is that the latest version of Windows 10 Armed Edition that you have to update to does support 64-bit application emulation. So anything that's 64-bit, you can run in this VM and it runs really well. We'll pull up a benchmark and we'll run it to, to show you the speed. It's really nice. I'm very impressed with the work that they've done. And look at this, we've already got network. We've already have, you can see that there's disk activity here. Now this is where it gets a little iffy here. It stays in this black window, right? So you think, well, what's going on? See, we all we need to do is wait or we might have to resize the window here. So I'm gonna let this sit here for a second. You can tell that there's disk activity, but I can't remember if we had to resize the window to get it to first go or we needed to reinstall the tools. Let me see if I can see. Okay, so I don't even have the option to reinstall the tools yet because we actually have to be in there first is from what I, when I was doing my initial testing. So let's just wait and we'll see if we get in here. Okay, we're back. I gave it enough time, I think, to load. Again, I wanted you guys to see what I experienced because you might experience the same thing. I haven't touched the window at all, so I'm going 
going to attempt to move around the window and see if we can't get this thing to come alive here. So let's try to resize this window and then, go, oh, look, see. Let's see if we can get some access here. And look, nothing's happening. I can't click on anything. So this is what was happening to me and I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. I'm like, what the heck is going on? I can't click on anything, I can't do anything. Let's see if we have the action to reinstall the tools. So this is all we need to do to get access back to the desktop. And again, so here's the steps. If you do get the black screen, all you need to do is open up the window a little bit more and then you'll see the screen again. And then hopefully you're on the desktop and then you can reinstall the parallel tools. And are you are going to reinstall the parallel to, uh, tools. Are you sure you want to continue? Now there's an important step that we have to talk about here. When you click yes, there's going to be an option to postpone the restart. And that's what we have to do here. So we'll give it a second here. So we'll click on actions to see the status. Okay, there it's installing the parallels tools now. And it, and it should, oh yes, this is what I wanted to see. It should, oh see, we needed to postpone. That's exactly what we needed to see. So we'll click on this postpone and we'll click okay here. And look, we've got access. We've got access to the machine now. Okay, so now that we're in, we can do whatever we want. This is the, the best part of the parallels. We can resize this window. Check this out, beautiful. And it resizes to the exact size of the window. You can even go full screen. Look at this. And when you do that, you're going to get the accessibility feature. So if you get this, click on open system preferences, and then you can unlock, we'll type in our administrator password, and then we'll check mark this, then that's it. That's all we needed to do. We'll close this back, we'll go back to the parallels, and then we're back into the OS. This is great, we've got it. Now, to get to the Mac files, all you gotta do is click on the Mac files, and it, you can click on all this. You can see you've got full access to your desktop on your Mac. Look at, there's our parallels desktop, there's our Windows 10 ARM v, VM, everything we need. So you got your files that you need. Let's check on our network. All right, we're in. So let's see. Let's try to run a benchmark to see the performance of the VM. Let's do Geekbench. Okay, well, let's run it. Let's run the bench CPU benchmarks. Okay, so we'll be back in just a little bit when this finishes running. Okay, while this is running, I, wanted, I thought it would be neat to show the activity monitor on the Apple Silicon device to see what we're doing on CPU load. And we're barely cracking 100% CPU. And I think the default settings, and we'll have to go back in there and look, is two processor cores. So I'm kind of curious to see what we'll get as a result when this is finished. I think it's using three gigabytes of RAM. That was the recommended setting. And we'll go back in there and look at those settings here. 1400 and 2730, that's a low. So let's go back, let's shut down the VM, go into the settings and see if we can't get this bumped up a little bit. Okay, let's go into the settings of the VM. Click on this gear. And then we'll go to, I think it is the option, no, the hardware. Okay, here we go. Here's the processors, two recommended. Let's bump it up to four. And let's bump it up to four gigs of RAM and see what we can get. All right, let's start it up. Okay, and there, here we're at with that problem again where we can't click. So we'll just go to the actions and reinstall the parallel tools. And this time I'll show you the work on, and actually it'll show you the progress down here in the dock icon. You can see the, the progress wheel here for the progress of reinstalling the uh, parallel tools here. And then you can see in here installing again. Okay, and we will postpone again. Okay, now we've got access. Now let's look at that device manager real quick here. Okay, I think it's system devices here. Okay, so we'll right click on the parallels tool device and uninstall device. And we also need to click delete the driver software for this device and click uninstall. And then let's restart and see if this works. Look at that, it works great. Now, I think all we need to do is reinstall the tools to get it back. Like let's say you want all those features back and you, you're fine with reinstalling the tools every time. So we the actions, reinstall the parallel tools again. And I think it will find that. Let's see if that works this time. Oh, hey, we gotta go to the D drive. 
I think we got to do it automatically. That's why. And then we'll do the auto run here. And then yes, reinstalling here. And that should put that driver back. But again, we'll have to just do this every time. That's no big deal. It only takes a second or two, and then you can use the VM. The good thing is we've got graphics acceleration here to run games and different and different things like that. So this is really exciting here. So we'll restart here. We'll see if we can get this going again. Okay. And let's see if we can click on there. Let's try to restart it one more time. Let's shut down and we'll restart just to see if it works. It'd be kind of interesting if that works even after the, the shutdown here. Almost like you had to just do it once. Let's see if this is working now. Yeah, it seems to be working. Maybe that's a workaround that will last now. We wanted to run our Geekbench again here after we modified to four cores and four gigs of RAM. I'm not, I don't think that the gigabytes of RAM is going to mean too much. I think it's more of the cores. So we'll see if we can get a, a better multi-core score here after running this again. Okay. And run the benchmark. We'll be back in a minute. Okay. We're back up. We got a 1478 and a 4,864 multi-core. That's a lot better than what we got before. So. And that's Windows 10 ARM Edition using Parallels Desktop 16 Insider Preview. I gotta tell you, I'm impressed with what I've seen so far. Again, yes, there's a couple of bugs, but the graphics acceleration, the Windows resizing, the networking is working, the file sharing is working. Basically, we've got the entire package here. I'm also excited to see what VMware will come up with their Fusion product. And I'll be testing that out as soon as that hits if they release a preview of that too. But again, Parallels, nice job getting this out before the holidays so we can all test out and i'm curious to see how you use this are you going to use it to install steam are you going to try it? what are you going to do what are you going to use it for let me know in the comment did it work for you let me know we see if you got any questions and again i hope this video created value for you if it did consider giving this video a like and subscribing for more videos like this in the future and if you're already a subscriber i really appreciate it and we'll catch you in the next video